Well, hey, thank you so much for inviting us to the ice arena today. My pleasure. Having ice arenas is, is a wonderful activity and a wonderful thing to have on college campuses. Um, how, how old is this place? How long does this go back? This was first built in 1931. 31. And um, by George Huff, actually. As in Huff Hall? Yeah. Okay. Uh, old okay. athletic director. Okay. And is this the same uh, building and ice we're going to see from the 1930s? Well, we've gone through a few renovations, thankfully, but we're known as the Big Pond. And okay. uh, it used to be 130 feet wide. Now we're 115 feet wide. But most ice rinks are only 100 feet wide, so it looks much bigger at our facility. And we're just under 200 feet long, and that's how long most rinks are, is 200. Some might be 180 feet. Okay. Is there a regulation size for hockey? Uh, the NHL now goes by 85 feet wide and 200 feet long. Okay. So you need to, to squeeze in your sideboards or something? or? Yeah, but I think if we do a renovation, we'll still stay 100 feet wide. International, international play is 200 by 100. Okay. And we like the, the larger ice, the more people that can be on the ice, um, the more cardio you're going to get. That's right. And, and the more fun, the more students can take part in the activities. Exactly. Here. That's exactly. right. Now, I understand, because uh, my son used to be on hockey teams, that ice time is really valuable. Yes. Practices at 3 a.m., are, are people still doing that? Are they well, still that crazy and using this place 24 hours a day? Uh, we are open as late as 2 a.m. on the weekends. Not always. And then as late as 1 a.m., students have to go home and sleep, right? So. Right. Uh, we open as early as 5.30 in the morning, so you could say 5.30 a.m. to 2 a.m., but that's really stretching it. Yeah. Uh, we do have a packed schedule. We serve not just the university students and all the clubs and organizations, but the community as well. And right. I know they appreciate the university having an ice rink for them. Absolutely. Ice rinks are rarer than you think. It's not every, every uh, university that has one. Right, right. In fact, downstate, south of uh, Chicago, it's here. I know there's one in um, in Springfield, right? Milton? Bloomington. Bloom yeah. Okay, Bloomington. And Decatur. And Decatur. Yeah. Peoria. Yeah. Today it's cold outside, but you're always open, or almost always open, except maybe in the middle of the summer. So how do you keep it frozen? Well, we have um, pipes running across the cement floor, inside the cement, and uh, it's through a brine water solution uh, that runs much colder than the freezing point of ice water and that runs at maybe 10 to 15 degrees okay. and it freezes the surface and then as we lay water on top it freezes the water okay the ice is only an inch to two inches thick and um, the less ice the cheaper it costs to freeze the yeah. thicker the ice the more it's going to cost so we don't want to get it too thick okay okay that's great so i noticed you brought in some ice skates right so we have um, two different kinds of ice skates here. This is the traditional Rydell ice skate that we've had for many years. And then this is a softer boot. People seem to really like the new modern looking boot. But if you notice on both, there is two edges on the ice skate. So you, you push off on the ice one way or the other to get a little traction to be able to move forward. So it's not yeah. just moving forward like this. You need to be able to um, turn your ankles just a little bit and dig into the ice and push off. Yeah. So if you looked at the cross section, the edges stick out farther. So it's like a little hollow between yeah. the two edges, right? It's flat edges yep. with, a, with a hollow in between. And we can tell if it's balanced when we put a penny or a quarter on top and if it sits there balanced, great. If it actually is not, you can, you can literally tell and you can actually see a little bit of a hollow in there mm -hmm. when you lay a coin across. Okay. Uh, if you have roller skated, similar concept. If you have skied, skis go very fast downhill but sometimes you have to go across the terrain or maybe even uphill a little bit and the only way you're gonna be able to do that is if you turn your skis or your skates outside a little bit to gain a little traction. I always like to tell people it's like dancing with uh, Axl Rose, the way he used to. I don't know, that may be for your time. So let me take this opportunity to tell a little bit about the physics of ice skating, the science of ice skating, why it actually works. Now many people think, and this is actually in older books, that what happens is when you have pressure, you actually lower the freezing point of a material. And that is true. But if you do the math, 
you shouldn't be able to ice skate most of the time. If it's right near freezing, if your ice was right at 32 Fahrenheit, right at zero, or a little below, obviously, so it was frozen, that pressure hypothesis would actually work. You would actually end up melting the water um, because of that additional pressure. But it turns out that the reason ice is slippery is that there is a thin layer of water on top of it, very thin, nanometer thin, always, whether or not you're putting a skate with the extra pressure. And you might ask why. Water is an unusual molecule. Water actually expands when it freezes. Everybody knows that, right? Every time you put a beer or a bottle of pop, you know, leave it outside, right? Top, pop comes, top comes off or the bottle breaks, right? Or a bottle of milk, right? We all know water expands when it freezes. But that's not normal. Most liquids, freezing means you increase in density, right? The molecular motion gets slower and slower and slower, and it freezes, and it, um, it contracts. It actually gets smaller. So water's ability to do this, to expand when it's frozen, is because it's an extremely polar molecule. You have an oxygen with two hydrogens on it, and the hydrogens, of course, are the smallest element, one electron. So it's quite a dipole moment. And the crystal structure that water makes actually has more space in it than the liquid water would have. So this is great if you're inside the crystal. If you're inside the crystal where everything forms these nice polar bonds, but on the surface of water, there isn't something to complete that crystal structure. So the molecules on the very surface of water are still in this amorphous, non-crystalline, liquid state where they can move past one another fairly easily. If water gets too cold, if ice is too cold, then even that small thin layer freezes. But that happens at about um, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So ice, really cold ice, is not as slippery. But of course, in an ice arena like this, since you chill it with a salt brine water solution, and remember, we all learned the, thermo, the, the Fahrenheit temperature scale. Zero was as cold as you can make a salt water solution. So this ice will never get below zero Fahrenheit. It's just would be physically impossible given how they do the cooling system. So it will always be slippery. And very interesting. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say as our ice sits probably around 20 degrees, and hockey players want it colder, right. harder, faster, and then, like you said, the ice is going to have some cushion in it. Mm -hmm. So the figure skaters like it to be maybe a little warmer, a little thicker, not jumping on the cement as much as they're jumping on that cushion of ice. Yeah. And we have center headers and then pipes going out and looping back and coming around to the return line. And then, then how much concrete is on top of those pipes that are under? I mean, it's a quarter inch above the pipe. They're embedded in a, it's a one inch pipe embedded in an inch, inch and, and a half. Quarter, inch and a half of concrete. So, concrete. So a quarter inch under the concrete is where you've got the cold pipes. It might be two inches of concrete, okay. I think of it. Yeah, and they're on chairs, the and there's going to be a little movement, and then there's four inches of insulation, then our old floor, that's supposed to be a thermal barrier, okay. a hot deck, and it's not working now, and so we had permafrost here years ago, so we actually had a heave in our cement, oh, and really? we cut that out, thawed the ground out, put a new floor on top, so then we had a subfloor, but that old floor finally failed on us, so we well, no longer a subfloor. Like you said, 80 years old. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so we got we got you do about an inch to two inches of ice, then you've got a quarter inch of concrete. You've got the pipes that carry the salt solution, and then some more concrete, and then some floor that gives you insulation between that and the ground. Insulation. Uh -huh. Two. Um, panels of two inch insulation, so four inches four thick inches of, insulation. of insulation, right. a little visqueen, and then the old concrete slab. Ah, and then there's more concrete below that. Yeah. Because okay. you need it level. You don't right. want to be sliding downhill on an ice pile, Yeah, we, right? Yeah, we, we have a little bit of an issue with that. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> but not as bad as it used to be. The heave, okay. was, the heave was over 10 inches, oh, and man. kids literally could skate from center ice to the boards backwards without as much problem as they could skate back to center ice right. because, because of the slope. Yeah. 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 
Okay. All right, so we have a completely empty concrete floor and you gotta go make the ice. All right, sort of like making the donuts. Get up early. And what yeah. do you do? So we have, um, we have this big agricultural spreader here and it is tied, connected to a 250 foot hose, two inch diameter hose. And we walk across the ring floor in a pattern, different patterns, about 75 times. Okay. It lays a thin mist of water so it gets smooth and less air and bubbles, how do you less not pockets. Slip as you're walking. That's a good question. We occasionally do. <laughs> we, we occasionally do. Uh, we have uh, little, rub, little cleats that we can put on our feet okay. if we choose. We offer that to anybody, and a lot of people choose not to, to be honest. But okay. thankfully, we don't slip too much. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of fun. All right. All right. So first, first you hose it down. Yes. Fine mist. All right. Right. And then out comes the Zamboni, or? No. We, okay. we, so we, like I said, we do it a, a, a good amount of times. Um, let's say 25 times we'll, we'll lay this Just walk this the ice with, your, with yeah. your hose. Yeah. Okay. And then we will bring out vinyl. Where we used to paint the ice, we now lay vinyl red lines oh, and vinyl lines, blue lines. The lines. Yeah. It's okay. You don't just spell, gray, spell gray, gray, gray. Uh, cherry juice? No. 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 And, okay. we, and we used to paint the okay. ice. We used to paint the logos. Um, the With vinyl is great. Paint. The vinyl okay. is, yes. Okay, now you a just temper, cut A temper paint, yeah, okay. a water, water soluble paint. Okay. And it, and it literally freezes the ice. As soon as you put the paint down, it freezes the ice. And it, okay. There's a little bit of an artwork involved, and it's not as environmentally friendly as vinyl. Right. And we get to reuse the vinyl, so that's the yeah, best thing yeah. about so vinyl. Yeah, so now it's just it. a big cutout. You just lay it down. Yeah, more okay, or less. It's like, it's like the guys, the, the, what are those big heads called on the... Fat heads? Fat heads. Fat it's heads. like a big fat head. Yeah, okay, right? yeah. stick it on the ice. Got it. Got it. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, it's almost translucent. So, right. and that There's helps the, the water line. flow through it, yeah. so it pretty much freezes yeah. in the water yeah. versus yeah. a lot of times it might sit I, up, but we don't lay it right. There'll be a bubble in it, and then we got to okay. figure out how to get it to lay okay. flat. And, okay, here, yeah. pass this around. Sort of like, this is, the, this is the blue line under the ice rink. Okay. Hi, Bill. Welcome to uh, How Things Work. Uh, and you're going to tell us about how to make ice and put lines in it and do all that great stuff. Right. So where okay. Dave kind of left off is we put all the vinyl lines down. Okay. And so you have vinyl sitting on ice, kind of frozen in, but not very thick. Yeah. So before you can dry the Zamboni, which you all notice has studded tires, so it can mm. eat up that vinyl a little bit, you want to get the vinyl frozen in. So we'll probably do maybe 40 more passes with the sprayer. Wow. Get it thick enough. This is a time-consuming process. It can take, depending on the hours we work, four days to a week. Sometimes wow. we'll work late in the evenings, early in the mornings, all day. Wow, all um, day to make the ice. Yes. Now, do you only do have to do this like once a year? Yes, typically we do it once a year because we close down in the summertime. Okay. Um, this year we're staying open in the summertime, so we're not taking the ice out. We're just going to keep the same ice down. Okay. okay. Um, so after we get enough water on top of the vinyl, it's all frozen in, we can dry the Zambonis. So maybe, what's the thickness of the ice at this point? Maybe about an inch. That much Maybe already? It could be a little less. So the whole, the whole first inch is all done by hand spraying? Most of it is. Okay. Um, then we'll dry the Zambonis out. You can lay water a lot faster with the Zamboni. A lot less people, a lot less um, you're paying staff to do it. One right. person can do it. So we'll do that for maybe a day just to kind of build it up. Um, and then we get to the point where we're ready to skate on the ice. We still want to build it up more, but we can, we can open and have activities on the ice. Okay. okay. Um, so the color stuff, it's... It's like a half inch under the surface about? Depending on where you're at on the ice. Um, okay. Our corners tend to get a lot thicker, anywhere two to four inches. The Zamboni drivers drive a lot slower in the corners. They flood it, it gets thicker. So those lines are buried, it's okay. harder to see. Um, and then Dave talked about the, uh, the concrete not being level. Right. So there's a few places where the concrete sits a little higher. So those vinyl lines are sitting a little closer to the top of the ice. Okay. So we constantly have to drill the ice to make sure we're not going to shave out the lines. Got it. Got it. All right. So tell us about the, about this machine. Why? Okay. Why first is it called Zamboni? Is it just an Zamboni Italian company? Zamboni is a brand name. Okay. Um, originally designed by Frank Zamboni years ago. Um, so the the generic term would be ice resurfacer. Aha. Uh -huh. um, Sort of like Kleenex and facial tissues. But most people refer to it as a Zamboni. Got it. That's what you're going to hear. Okay. Um, so do you want me to explain just the basic yeah, yeah, how please. to resurface the ice? So yeah. 
coming back here, there's, there's three main functions of the Zamboni. Um, the first thing, if you guys want to get closer and look in a little bit, um, there's a, basically a razor blade, the whole width of the back of the machine. Pretty heavy, very sharp. If you touch it with your finger, it'll cut you. Don't touch it with your finger. Don't touch it. Okay. Um, so what that does, you <laughs> set it at a certain level, and that's going to shave a bunch of slush and snow. It gets into the augers right here, horizontal augers. The horizontal augers are going to kick the snow into the vertical augers, which goes up here and throws the snow into the tank. So it shaves it, gets ground up. It throws it? This, this whole thing just, this it, whole part. It'll go down. Okay, so that right goes down. It's, it's up because right. we dumped the snow. And that's where all the, the slush goes. All the, sl that all the snow goes. That you're clearing off of the right. ice. Okay. So, so that's kind of the first step you do. Then inside the conditioner here, mm -hmm. there's what is called the wash water system. That is shooting water onto the ice. It's inside the conditioner. And what that does is it washes the ice and it also fills in some of the deeper ruts we get from maybe hockey skating. Um, so that water shoots in, then it gets sucked back up. Some of the water stays into the grooves of the ice. Okay. And then on the very back of the machine, we have the ice making water. And that's a hotter water that comes off the back of the machine. And you, as you can see, there's a towel on here too, which will help smooth that out to make a smooth surface. Uh -huh. uh, the hot water does a good job really smoothing out the ice a little more. So hot water goes down. Hot water. And the towel then goes over it. Yes. And how much of a, each pass, how much ice do you build up generally? It's, it's less than an eighth of an inch. I mean, it's, okay. it's not a lot. Okay. okay. So you kind of want to, you're shaving up a tank of snow, you kind of want to put back what you took down, what right. you took out. So. Right. Right. But then you can adjust the amount you're shaving or the amount you're putting right. down, so, so you can build it up over time. After a busy public skate, we really want to shave a lot more, try to make the ice smoother. Uh -huh. if, if we have um, a few people skating, you don't need to shave as much. Okay. So you might take the opportunity to build up the ice where it's thin. Okay. Well, up here, right here, is your board brush. Um, oh, to clean the sidewall. The Zamboni shaves, it can't get all the way to the wall. So you have like this much of an area, so you want to get the surface snow, kick it into the machine. Um, in the evening, I'll take you guys back over here. That machine is an edger. It's like a lawnmower on the ice. Okay. So you're not shaving that spot around the edge of the rink. So it right. builds up. So every night, we run the edger around the perimeter of the rink to shave it down to get it level with the rest of the ice surface. All right. All right. Um, and then, of course, you have to carry your own water, right? And so that's what here, the tank this is, is for. Your, your ice making water tank, which comes okay. off the back, the hot water. And up in here, you have your wash water tank, which is a lot smaller because it recycles the water. Got it, got it. And then, since you don't want, you're inside, you don't want air pollution and coughing, so it all runs on electricity. Right, we, both machines are electric. Um, the one catch with the electric machines, you get about eight resurfaces and then you have to charge it. Yeah. In a typical day, we do more than eight resurfacing. So, we have two machines, we switch them out, put one on charge, the other one can do eight cuts, basically. Great, great. Fascinating. All right, um, should we go see the ice? So here I am in center ice, and we can see several important things. First, under the um, snow, which now has made the ice a little less clear, we can see the vinyl lettering, the beautiful eye for Illinois. And also, you can see why you need a thing like a Zamboni. Here's the snow they talk about. When people go past with their blades, they kick up some, some of the ice. And if you just didn't resurface this, the ice would get worse and worse. You'd have more and more uh, divots and lines and scoring marks, especially when people jump and use the toes of their skates, right? That actually makes quite a big uh, scratch. So you need to shave off a portion and then fill it back in with water so it freezes again. And that's why they resurface the ice every day. And that's how ice skating works. <laughs>